Hey, 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 let's sew a button-up peplum shirt. To sew along with me, grab my new PDF sewing pattern for the canary shirt over at charliedarwintextiles.com forward slash patterns. The pattern comes in nine body sizes for bust circumferences from 31 to 49 inches. So once you've got your pattern downloaded and printed in your preferred size, Tape together your pages without overlapping the paper. Cut it out, and then we'll get to the good stuff. Oh, and in just a couple minutes, I'll show you how to adjust your sewing pattern for your body height, too. Iron your fabric so there are no wrinkles whatsoever. Get it nice and flat. Position your pattern pieces with the arrows running parallel to the selvage edge of your fabric. I recommend using something to weigh down your pattern so it doesn't get all shifty on you as you try and trace it. If you plan to adjust the sewing pattern to work with your body height, if you're a shorty like me or you're a tall Paul, then start by putting your height into the Charlie Darwin Height Adjustment Calculator to see how much length you should add or subtract from the bottom of certain pattern pieces. You can find a link to this calculator in your pattern instructions. In this example, the shirt was being made for a tall Paul, someone taller than 64 inches. So I added length to the bottom of the bodice and the wrist of the sleeve. You wanna keep the overall width of the hemline the same, just drop it down or raise it up and adjust the lines that match up with it. After tracing onto your fabric, go ahead and cut out each piece. Oh baby, it's time to sew. Here we go. So our first step is going to be to stay stitch the necklines. What you want to do here is top stitch a line a quarter inch in or parallel to that cut edge around the neckline on all four bodice pieces. Back stitch at each end. This helps keep the neckline from stretching before we put the collar stand on. Next, we're going to sew the center back seam. With the wrong sides facing of the back bodice pieces, stitch the center back from the neckline down to the bottom hem. Now go ahead and press the seam open. And for each side of the seam allowance here, you wanna fold the edge underneath itself so the raw edge is tucked back in toward the seam. Now try and iron this bad boy as you go until you've folded and pressed the entire length on both sides. If you got a more slippery fabric that doesn't stay just from your iron, you might wanna pin this if you need to sort of keep it in place before sewing it. All right, now over to the sewing machine. You wanna stitch down each long edge as close to that fold as you can reliably get. You don't wanna fall off the fold, but get really close to the edge. Next, we're gonna prepare the center front edge of the bodice. So we're going to serge or use the zigzag stitch on your sewing machine to finish the raw center edge of both bodice front pieces. Next, we're going to fold and press this center front edge toward the wrong side of the bodice by 1.5 inches. You might wanna pin this one down. Then go ahead and stitch at 1 8 inch from that surged edge. All right, onto the shoulders. Now we're going to lay our front bodice pieces with right sides facing toward our back bodice piece. Align those shoulder seams and pin. Then we wanna stitch at a half inch seam allowance along those shoulder lines. Surge the edges or finish it off with the zigzag stitch. Now there's two different options for the collar. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to do the collar stand only, but there's full instructions on how to do the traditional classic collar with the collar stand in the written instructions. 
To start, let's fold the long edge of one collar up one half inch toward the wrong side and iron this down. Then with the folded edge facing up, place this collar piece on top of the unfolded collar piece, right sides together. Pin it in place. Starting at the bottom left corner, stitch around the collar, but leave that long bottom edge unstitched. To remove bulk, you want to cut the seam allowance down to about 1 8 inch where you just sewed. Then turn the collar right side out and press it with your iron. Now we're going to attach our collar to our neckline. With the right sides facing each other, pin the collar to the neckline, matching the center back points of the collar and that, that back center seam. Stitch all the way around at one half inch. Now press the seam allowance up toward the collar. Now we're gonna tuck this neckline in for the night. Let's go ahead and take that folded edge from earlier and fold it down over the neckline stitching so that it covers the stitching. You're definitely gonna to wanna to pin this part. Now starting about three inches in on the bottom edge of the collar, stitch around the entire collar. Next we'll attach the sleeves. I'm going to show the variation for view A, the long straight sleeves, but the instructions for the butterfly sleeves are in the written instructions. With the right sides facing each other, pin the sleeve to the shoulder round. Be sure to match up the center shoulder with the center of the sleeve. Stitch all the way around and finish with a serger or a zigzag stitch. Repeat on the second side. Now fold the wrist under one half inch toward the wrong side. We're gonna come back to this later. Next, let's finish the underarms and the sides. With the right sides facing, align the underarms and the sides of the bodice. Pin them in place and stitch. Finish with a serger or a zigzag stitch. Repeat it on the second side. Now we're ready to officially hem the sleeves. So. Press the wrist under another one half inch toward the wrong side. Pin this in place and stitch all the way around. Now here's the instructions if you're going to attach the peplum ruffle as seen in view A of this pattern. With right sides facing, stitch along one short edge of the peplum rectangles. Surge this edge or zigzag it to keep it from getting unruly. Now press the seam allowance to one side and stitch it down. Now press the bottom edge of our long rectangle up one quarter inch. Then press again another quarter inch. Now press each short edge under a quarter inch, then another quarter inch, and stitch it down. All right, so we have our peplum fully hemmed. Now using a stitch length of four, sew a straight stitch all the way across the top long edge of your peplum piece, the one that hasn't been hemmed at all. Put this stitching a quarter inch from that top edge. Back stitch at the beginning, but instead of back stitching at the end, leave a tail of thread about six inches long. Now with the right sides facing, we want to match that peplum rectangle with the two sides of our bodice 
and the center back of the bodice. A quick tip, if you have an ironing board that is soft fabric, try pinning everything down to the ironing board at each edge to hold it in place. Then to gather the fabric and create ruffles, we want to pull that top thread, the one that wasn't backstitched down, pull it gently until the peplum is the same length as the bodice pieces. If you used the ironing board pinning method, stick an extra pin a few inches from the tail thread side, and once you have the thread pulled just the right amount, you can wind it around this side pin to hold it in place while you iron everything down. So you wanna evenly space these ruffles throughout the length. Make sure that your center backs still line up. Now use your iron to press everything down really well and then put some pins in there intermittently to hold it in place. Now you wanna return your sewing machine stitch length to whatever your regular is. I keep mine at 2.5. Top stitch the ruffles to the bodice with the ruffle side facing up. Now serge or use a zigzag stitch to finish the edge. From here, we want to press the seam allowance of the peplum waist up towards the bodice. Then top stitch it down at 1 8 inch. If you're not doing the peplum waist and instead you're doing view B, then check out my guide for sewing the bottom hem in the written instructions. All right, we're almost there. So next we're going to add our buttonholes and buttons. To start, the bottom of the first button should begin one inch below the seam that's conjoining the bodice and the collar. Then from there, you can use the buttonhole markings on your paper pattern to mark the placement on the left front panel, left when the finished garment is facing you. Traditionally, men's shirts have buttons on the other side. So if you're making this shirt and you want it to be in the traditional men's style, put the buttons on the right front panel. Once you've got it all marked out, use a buttonhole foot on your sewing machine to add buttonholes. I like to open these buttonholes with a pair of sharp, small, sharp scissors. But you can also use a seam ripper. If using a seam ripper, just place a pin at the far end of the buttonhole so that you don't rip right through it. Now place the buttonhole side on top of the side that we want to add the buttons to. Mark where each button needs to go. Then put the buttons on their marks and tape them down to hold them in place. Use the button settings and the button foot on your sewing machine and stitch straight through that tape. Go ahead and trim your threads and then remove the tape. You did it. I'm so proud of you. You're a serious magician. 
I believe in you wholeheartedly. You just completed this shirt. It looks amazing. Try it on. Well, first of all, stretch your body so that you don't get a hunchback. Really get your muscles worked out. Oh, yeah. Now put the shirt on. Give yourself a huge hug while you wear it. It's amazing what you did. You made something for yourself and you're a magician. That's all I got to say. Keep up the good work. You're the best. All right. Bye.